Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part two of the Maisie Golden Retriever Pet Portrait. I hope you enjoy watching the pet portrait painting process. Try to say that five times real fast. <laughs> anyway, today I'll be putting some further details onto this pet portrait. Here I'm using a quarter inch Philip Grainer brush. I like this brush because it has a very fine tooth and I'm using parchment mixed with titanium white just to add some texture along the top part of the head over the um, underpainting. And there's a lot of sun hitting, a lot of light hitting on the top of the head and also here on the side. Here I'm using a small fan brush to create some fluffy fur along the edges. And by the end of part two today, you're gonna see uh, the fur start to look like actual fur. Um, just adding, I'm not covering completely the underpainting, just adding on top of it, and you'll still see those golden colors underneath. Here I'm going over the tail with um, some of that light color, just in areas, just to add to the fluffy fur. It's a very fluffy tail blown in the wind, and um, at the end of the painting, I really do capture that. You just have to be patient and uh, do all the different layers that it takes to get to that point. So I'm fast forwarding through this part. The brush I'm using here is a quarter inch angle brush. I know what you're saying here. Oh good, she's finally going to get rid of that underpainting of the mustache under the nose. Since, uh, <laughs> since the last tutorial there was half a mustache showing, it's kind of irritating, but soon I go over that with a little bit of this parchment color mixed with titanium white. Uh, the muzzle has a nice white glow to it. So as I add the lighter color of the parchment with titanium white in these different areas where it's very bright, I'm using just the edge of the brush to make it very fine so that the hairs are just going over the underpainting and you still see the underpainting through that. Um, there's a lot of light that shows up on the eyebrows above the eyes and, um, and that's what I'm doing here, I'm going around the eyes with a brighter color. And here I'm being sure not to cover all that shadowed area, but just add some light hairs over it a bit. And then here above the nose, that's a very sunny spot in the portrait, my uh, reference uh, photo portrait. And uh, then I went and I got a little bit of the um, raw sienna, mixed that into the mixture, and I put some of those little shadows and the divots on the top of the snout. 
uh, also pulled that right down onto his nose where the sun was shining and it was a little bit lighter on the top of his nose. A lot of detail goes into the nose later on in the portrait, um, actually in part three of the portrait. So here I'm making sure that the, uh, the lip lines up properly going underneath the muzzle. And a little bit later in the portrait, and I'm not even sure if it's at the end of this one or in part three, where I lift the um, mouth up a little bit higher on the right hand facing side of the portrait, I noticed that it was a bit lower than it should be. His little smile comes up a bit higher. So you'll notice that later on. When I make that correction to his smile, you'll see just how easy it is to fix a problem. Uh, if you're having a problem with the, you know, you're a little bit off on the one side from the other, um, you know, something's crooked, it's just an easy fix. Everything is an easy fix when it comes to painting. You just have to concentrate and, and uh, make that tweak. Um, you'll always have to tweak as you go along, just make little corrections and uh, just making sure everything is balanced properly. And in this case, with this golden retriever, his head is cocked a little bit to the left, to the side where his tail is all fluffy. So I'm adding a little bit of brightness here um, with a very fine paintbrush using the titanium white with the parchment and that just shows the differentiation between the ear and uh, the side of the face and the side of the face is always shadowed of course where the ear is, is definitely covering any kind of light source. And here I'm just adding a little bit of hair texture on the ear and um, just a few. There's a lot of layers that go into these ears. It's um, a lot of fluffy areas and some shadowed areas. And here I'm coming down the side with where that ear bumps out just a little bit and you see a little bit more sunshine. Um, you can see a little left of what I'm painting there is darker. So that's bent under towards the face. Does that make sense? And uh, later when I'm putting the final details in, I come in and glaze a little bit of like an, almost like a peachy apricot color uh, into areas of the ear that bring out a lot of shadows and dimension in the ear. And here I'm taking a little bit of um, burnt umber mixed with titanium white, just adding a little bit more to that shadow uh, where the cheekbones are um, blocking the sun and then it goes under the ear. There's lots and lots of layers um, 
in the process of creating the look of the offer, which um, you'll see at the end of it all. As the ears get darker towards the tips. So as I add texture on the side of, uh, or anywhere on the portrait would prefer, and just use the edge of the brush and very light coat of uh, paint on my brush, and then just kind of make little streaks along um, in the direction that the fur is going to go. For instance, on this golden retriever, around the, um, underneath the mouth, you'll see the fur sort of going down into a triangular uh, direction because there's a collar under there. Uh, later you'll see that I add the tag and the uh, license on the collar. So you'll see where the collar's coming out, but it kind of bumps out right where I'm painting right now. Um, so I'm just adding some texture over that underpainting. Just a few lighter furs, part of the layering. Another little smiley dog. I love painting these smiley little dogs. The tongue looks really funny right now in this portion of the painting, and uh, but it changes a lot over the period of time before the finished product, thankfully. Because right now, it goes to show you um, where you put highlights and where you put shadows makes the painting alive. Because for instance, looking at how I have the shadows on the tongue right now and the lighting, it looks like the tongue is curled up, which actually the tongue on this dog is not curled up, so once I fix that shadow and that highlight, you'll see that it, it flattens back out. It's really interesting, just like with the ears, when you want to make a turn in the ear, um, you know, you just add a little dark and a little light in certain areas, and it actually makes the turn in the ear. It's so much fun to paint. Do you see now how we're starting to see the texture and the curls in the uh, fur down on the body there? And now I'm taking that brush and I'm just taking the light um, going over some of those darker areas with some fine um, uh, lines of the white fur just to create another layer. And here I actually added a little bit of the um, burnt umber and I'm bringing in some little darker uh, highlights with my uh, my tooth, uh, not a toothbrush, <laughs> but uh, a brush with cuts in it that make like fine lines. I will get you the name of that brush, but um, it's broke off my paintbrush and it's an old brush, so I don't know what it's called, um, but I'll find out for you. But you can see it now, you see the teeth in the brush? It's really great for creating hair, uh, so I'll definitely get the name of that brush for you. I tried to look it up and couldn't find it. I hope they still sell it. So 
So if you notice here, um, every once in a while I go down and I pick up a little bit of the burnt umber mixture, and then other times I'll pick up a little bit of the uh, raw sienna, and I'll mix the two together just to kind of go with those light and dark undertones, but to put some fur on top of it. And now I've got just the burnt umber and a little bit of Mars black and titanium white. So it's like a faded out brownish gray. And I'm just kind of adding some of those colors down underneath the nose. Um, and then just a little bit more texture into the, to the actual nose. Uh, I don't get into the details of the nose too, too much right here. Um, most of that comes out, like I said, in part three. Basically what I'm doing here with the nose is I'm just kind of adding a little bit of shadow around the nose where the hair is just a little bit dark as the nose meets the snout and the actual, you know, dark part of the nose meets the snout hairs. Um, and then just kind of going around the nostrils and making sure that they're in the right area and all that. And of course they do get tweaked a bit more. So I was adding a few of the little um, dimple areas where some of the whiskers will come out later on. I really am excited about you all seeing part three of this um, painting process uh, because that's where all the fun details come out. I am so excited about it that I wished and I thought maybe I should put part three as part two and then tell people to watch part two as part three. <laughs> And, um, and then they could go back and look at the finished product. But I just am excited about you seeing the end process because that's the most fun process. Um, but it's all important. So hang in there with me. And, uh, you know, fast forward where you find something boring and you don't need it. You maybe already know that step. Uh, maybe certain steps feel a little redundant to you. Just feel free to fast forward and um, but look forward to part three. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I hope you do. So here now I'm adding some of the uh, really light spots on the top of the head with the um, a titanium white and the parchment color and just kind of pulling those fine hairs over the shadowed areas um, and that's basically what I'm doing here and going around the eyes putting some of the fine uh, fur lines around um, in the eyebrow area and where the sun's hitting up there at the top. So that's what it's all about at this point, is just adding those layers of um, fine hairs um, going over the underpainting. So now I'm adding some detail into the eye, and I still don't get into a whole lot of the detail of the eye until part three, but just adding a little highlight there and some with a very fine uh, detail brush. You see my little tiny brush there? I love that little brush. It's actually kind of worn out, but it's perfect because it's just a few little hairs. It's very, very small. And I love that for getting all the details, like those little lines in the eyeballs that, um, you know, when you look at an eye, you see these little tiny uh, light areas and dark areas. But that detail brush is perfect for that.
All these little details along the way are so important uh, and they just make such a difference, don't they? Just uh, that little bit of sparkle in the eyes just helps the eyes to come alive. And then taking uh, that light and going around um, where the eye turns and the light from the sun would be hitting it in different areas. Now, when you're painting a portrait, um, if there's not a lot of light showing in the eyes, but you really need to add and use your own discretion on adding some highlights in different areas that um, will actually help the eyes to stand out. That's a great idea to go ahead and use your artistic license to do that. Just add uh, some different highlights in the eyes and around the eyes to help them to stand out because the eyes are so important to a portrait. I feel like the eyes are uh, the most important. So um, on this portrait, there was a lot of sun hitting the nose and the snout. So that's why there's so much white um, that I put up there. Titanium white mixed with the parchment. And I think I have a little bit, yeah, of uh, raw sienna in that as well. I slowed down the uh, video for this um, to show you some of these important areas that would be getting the uh, major highlights. And the highlight color that I'm using here is titanium white with a tiny little bit of uh, yellow ochre. And um, so here's where I am actually lifting that smile up a little bit. So first I'm bringing that pushed up area of the cheek, I guess, or uh, upper of the lip, um, basically, um, and moving it up because I noticed, like I said earlier, that it was too low. So uh, this is how you correct a situation like that. And uh, eventually I'll take some of the black paint and then leave the black part of the under part of the actual lip up into that dimpled cheeky area. The brush I'm using here is a well-worn-out 
a long handled a round brush. I think it's a quarter inch round. Um, again, it's such an old brush that it doesn't have the number on it anymore. Uh, but any round, medium sized round brush would work well for this. But I like that mine is, um, it's a hard bristle and uh, it's kind of worn out. So there's some longer hairs and some shorter. You can actually cut a newer brush if you want it to have that effect. And then I'm just using that for the highlights. I like that it's harder rather than a real soft hair brush, um, you know, for putting in these details. And I don't have a lot of paint on my brush at this point. I'm just putting the highlights in. And one reason you don't want to have a lot of paint on your brush at this point is because you're going over all your hard work putting that underpainting in there and you don't want to cover those tones completely. You want them to show through. So you just have a little bit of paint on your brush and just very lightly uh, pull over that underpainting. Now here on the tail, I did put a little bit heavier paint because that area is like uh, the tail, uh, a bit of the tail fur curled over and was real fluffy and light in that area. So it needed a little bit more paint. And then um, as I get down here to the details and go over some of the finer hairs, I'm gonna go back to very, very little paint, like right now, just putting that little highlight on the top of the tail just very little bit of paint on the brush is all you need. So right now with very little bit of paint on my brush, I'm doing what um, we call scuffling and or what I call scuffling. Um, you just kind of just um, a lightly brush in a rounded fashion to kind of add a fluffy fur. That's what I was doing on the tail and actually that's what I'm doing right here on that highlighted part of the ear. And now just adding some highlights up into that very fluffy little tail that's blowing in the wind. From this angle, it's really looking like a golden retriever now, isn't it? You see I've put a lot of details in the tail. And now I'm taking a number five flat brush. It's a long handled brush, one of my favorites. And I'm just taking a little bit of the parchment mixed with some raw sienna and a little titanium white. And I'm just pulling some fine hairs down over that dark underpainting. And if you notice that the, um, the fur on the ear at this section of the ear as the ear is turning. As you're going to the right on the top part of the ear, the hairs go out towards the ear and kind of turn downward, but go out towards the ear. And then as you come down to the tip of the ear, then the little hairs go straight and then turn towards the tip of the ear. And they just kind of hang over that underpainting. So there's like a darker fur under there and then these little fine hairs hang over it. Um, you'll see. And then it makes the ear look so fluffy and uh, realistic. 
I'm sorry, I meant to say when you're going to the left, to the left hand facing side of the painting, not the right, when I was taking those little fine hairs down with that number five flat brush. What do you think guys? It's starting to look like a real dog now. So I'm taking that number five flat brush with just the tiniest little bit of um, that highlight color, which right now it is the parchment, titanium white, and a little bit of raw sienna. And I'm just kind of pulling some of those fine hairs um, along that shadowed area, being very careful not to completely cover that darker area but just show some of those fine hairs um, and then coming up in the direction of the fur. Always when you're looking at your uh, reference photo, be very careful to see the direction that the fur is supposed to go and try to bring those, um, those little streaks of top coat or fur up in the direction that they should be going. Because if you accidentally go in the wrong direction, it can completely throw you off. Um, anything can be fixed, but it just makes it harder for you to uh, stay in the right direction. So here I've added in a little bit uh, more of the raw sienna and I'm just bringing in um, some of the shadows underneath like the bone structure under the eye, um, just very, very lightly putting some of those fine furs on those areas as well. And here underneath the little pushed up area of the mouth, um, it needs to be shadowed right around the dark lip area so you can see that little dimple in the smile. And now I'm putting some fine hairs in that color uh, so it's not the light highlight color, it's that darker color. It just looks lighter because it's going over such a dark shadow there. And just pulling in some of the hairs in the direction that they should be going over that, um, that darker shadowed area because you would still see some, um, you know, little hairs in that area. And being careful not to go over the um, very dark shadow between the face and the ear, um, because that's usually always quite dark because no light is getting to it, like I said earlier. So here I'm just using a little bit of a scuffling motion just to kind of blend that in. And then around the lips, this little smiley face. So here's where you would take your uh, reference photo and just kind of um, lightly Go over areas that are lighter and darker and just keep on tweaking it until you get it just right. I added a little bit of uh, the color called Golden Glow into that um, darker highlight color and I'm bringing that up into the tail a little bit um, in different areas so 
because as that tail is flying and there's the white or the very light fluffy parts of the tail there's also shadows because the hair would be turned in areas and so when you put the darker in there it just shows that the hair is turned and there's a little shadow there and also some of the hairs actually have light and dark in them so that's important too and bring in some of that uh, the lighter highlight color which is the um, titanium white uh, parchment and a little bit of raw sienna just a little bit but I'm um, bringing that up around the eyes and um, again just adding some definition uh, more fine hairs Again, making sure you leave, um, you know, that under painting still showing from underneath. I hope you can see that here um, on the TV or wherever you're watching this YouTube, but you can still see that under painting under there. You want to make sure that you don't completely cover it. The tone should, should be showing through. Just like if you, you know, you look at your dog right now and you see their fur, you actually see, you know, um, even when you're looking at a dog that has white fur, you actually see different colors in there. All right, so now we're back to a little bit more detail on the eye. Making sure that it's dark underneath the brow, where light would not be, uh, you know, shining there. And then there's going to be some darker hairs up, uh, up above the eye. You want to use a very small um, detail brush for this. So you may have noticed how when you're putting in the dark hairs, it looks kind of funny and you're thinking, hmm, that's 
pretty dramatic, but then once you come back with that small little detail brush and you add some of those tiny little white fur's, uh, like I'm doing now, uh, then it it blends that dark fur in with the light, so that the different color furs are mixing together. And um, still at this point, it looks pretty funny though, because you see the drastic lighter color and the drastic darker color. But as we go along and we layer and layer, there's a lot to it, you know? Um, and now I've got a larger, that's a very small uh, long handled flat brush that I'm using there. But once you go along and you blend those colors in together, um, it all starts to look like real fur. But it takes time. So here I'm taking that light um, highlight color and I'm going to bring some very fine furs out from the top of the head and the top of the ear and then the sides of the ear that's coming over the front of the tail. And then you'll start to see the differentiation between the tail and the ear. And uh, I think that's a lot of fun to see. Each step is a lot of fun. If you get frustrated with it, which I do sometimes get like, um, I don't know if you'd say frustrated, but um, oh, there's an airplane going by, sorry. But if you get to the point where you're like, this is just um, not coming together right here, and I'm having a little bit of a hard time with it, step away and get a little drink of water or something, just relax for a minute, and then go back in. Sometimes if you go back in, this is funny, but uh, I learned this when I was a makeup artist years ago, but you go back in with your eyes closed and then open them up and look at the painting and you're like, wow, oh yeah, that looks good, but I see what I need to do, and then just start fresh. That's just my little uh, trick of the trade. So sometimes when you put a little bit of color on there, you can use your finger to just kind of like smush it around there and that just gives that area a light coat and um, it, it sort of blurs it out. That really helps. So on that small um, flat brush, I took a little bit of raw sienna, a little golden glow, and a little titanium white, 
and I'm just putting um, some really fine hairs along the dark area again, just kind of pulling them in um, to some of the lighter furs that I've got there. And um, pulling it over that darker undertone as well. A little bit later, uh, it looks like I covered over um, the shadow a little bit too much between the face and the ear, so later on I come in and put that. And here I darkened this up with a little tiny bit of um, uh, burnt umber and I just added a little bit of some of those little dark individual hairs again. Layers and layers and layers of paint. And with acrylics, I do love layering paint because with oils, you, you see thickness but with acrylics you don't see thickness on your paint unless you add a medium to it uh, there are a lot of different mediums that you can add to acrylic to make it act like an oil paint or look or appear thick like an oil paint but i don't i don't normally use those so uh, i really enjoy layering and layering on top of uh, of acrylic paint and uh, to me it makes the fur look very realistic You can always use the nose and the eyes and different areas of the face to guide where you are. Like I was noticing that coming out from the ear just a little above it, the ear came out a little bit further when I looked at my uh, reference photo. So that's just um, something that comes in handy. Just keep on looking at how the nose sits compared to the ears compared to the eyes and and all of that using the different features to guide you to the right area for a particular um, detail so I, here i come in with a um, small flat brush um, with some a raw umber mixed in with my um, raw sienna to darken up just little streaks here and there of hair and and then where I put the darken along the edge here on the right hand facing side that shows that that's the leg and then this is fur coming out over that leg that front leg so just adding some some more detail to the hair So here's where I take that uh, dark lip color, which is actually just Mars Black, and I did lighten it with just the tiniest little bit of titanium white, and uh, brought that up a little bit higher. Remember I was talking about that? And I had already brought the cheek up a little bit higher, that pushed up area of the mouth. 
So now I'm bringing that black up in there. Um, and I'll eventually put some more shadows up around that little uh, dimpled area and make that look more realistic as well. I hope you're enjoying watching this pet portrait um, process. If, um, if you are, let me know. If you think it's a little long and drawn out, I should have maybe just done a speed painting through everything and um, opened up a Patreon page possibly for the full tutorial um, for just those interested. Let me know what you think. I really do appreciate your opinions. Um, you know, I am a fairly new channel. I just started, I'm brand new. I just started in January. so. I, um, you know, I really appreciate your input on that and what you'd like to see. So now we're going to lighten up this tongue a bit. I took um, some macadamia red and some white and a little tiny bit of that crimson red in there too. And I just lightened up the tongue in areas. It was looking a little bit too purpley. So I just kind of speed through this because um, the complete detail of the tongue is going to be in, in uh, part three of this um, pet portrait process. But even just lightening it up like that looks so much better. There's a little tiny portion of a gum line back there underneath that one tooth. So I hopped over there and put that in. And then lightening up this on the side and, and turning it a little bit like that makes the tongue appear to be bent over the teeth that are underneath that tongue. And um, do you see that? How just putting that little bit of light up there made it bend. And now the tongue is bending more properly than my underpainting. It looked like the tongue was curled up. But you just make a few little tweaks and changes and it cha changes the whole entire shape of the tongue. That's what's great about painting. And it's darker under the um, top lip there because that's shadowed. So I added a little bit of Mars Black to the mix and um, just a little bit to that uh, tongue color. And then just added that shadow. And then here I came in with a, a little bit of the lighter color again just to put it there in the center where it's actually sticking up a little bit higher because it's sitting over the teeth. And then those creases were made with the darker uh, shadow color, just kind of um, emphasized a little bit. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it very much. Please hit like and subscribe and the bell for notifications of part three coming up, the final part of this uh, three-part painting tutorial of the Golden Retriever. Thanks again and take care, everyone. Bye-bye.